stage. Grégory, are you ready? Yes, I am. Hello, everyone. Hello, hey, Gregory. Can you hear me? Hello. I'm we pleased hear you. to be with you all today. Perfect. So, thanks for inviting me again. Uh, I'm really happy to share with you uh, what you can expect within the next BI 4.3 service pack. Uh, today will be mostly demo, demo. So, a little bit of slide, of course, but mostly demo. So, this being said, uh, let's start. Uh, okay, so allow me to select the right screen on my side. Uh, you confirm that at least you can all see the first slide, correct? I think so. So let's start. Move to start business objects BI 4.3 SP3. This is still a preview. Even if what I'm going to share with you all today, uh, you can get it by December this year. So the product will be made available, will be released by December this year. So I still have to show you the legal disclaimer. So everything that I'm going to demo and show to all of you will be there is a high chance into the product. Uh, things can happen. Uh, on the, <laughs> we can still remove things if you are not happy with uh, one or two functionalities that I'm going to share with you, uh, even inside this preview. Before we start, some important messages for all of you that I'm pretty sure you are already all aware of. First of all, uh, SAP is committed to continue to invest into the on-premise BI suite. This is a size I'm showing every time I'm doing a webinar. SAP will continue to enhance and invest into the SAP business objects on-premise BI suite. Uh, I'm showing this slide since four years because every time I get the questions, what's going on with business objects? Guess what? We continue to innovate. And the BI 4.3 was there to, uh, to show you that we, we continue to invest and innovate and the SP3 is a continuation of this message. Second things, really important. Uh, and uh, you might uh, have seen this already regarding the product strategy about sub business objects. Last June, June 2022, we released an important document, the SAP Analytics Statement of Direction. Uh, this is a public document where we describe what's going on regarding the, uh, what's going on regarding the analytics at SAP. This document concerns uh, SAP Analytics Cloud, of course, but also sub business objects. And inside this document for the area concerning business objects, we are uh, sharing with you an important things. The important thing is this one, this slide, uh, concerning the main timelines regarding SAP BI 4.2, which you are already aware, uh, the main maintenance of BI 4.2 will end by December this year, which means that this is almost tomorrow. This is in eight weeks, eight weeks. Otherwise, you will enter the priority one support that will end December 2024. And the release we all advise you to adopt is, of course, the BI 4.3 with the main tree maintenance, which is planned to end by December 2025, and the priority one support for BI 4.3, December 2027. And there is a new line below this one. Uh, this is the future release code name SAP Business Objects BI 2024, which means that once we have adopted BI 4.3, that it is our recommendation, by the end of 2024, you will have a new version of Business Objects, a new release that will be made available not only for the cloud, which is our primary target, but also on-premise, which means that now you have the choice. You can adopt the cloud and, for example, uh, SAP Business Objects Private Cloud Edition or SAP Index Cloud at your own pace. You have the choice. So uh, first, second message, SAP Business Objects BI 2024, new version for on-premise and the cloud, which is going to be released by the end of 2024. Another thing important that you have all to be aware of concerning this release, the SAP Business Objects BI 2024, inside this release, we will focus on the most adopted tools that you are using, which means that you review, invest only in web engines, of course, the universes of type Unix, the single source Unix, Crystal Report Classics, SAP analysis from Microsoft Office and the BI platform, including the BI Launchpad. It is 
in advance our area of investments, which means that if, if, if we invest in certain areas, it means that we will stop to invest in some others. And where are we going to stop to invest in? That's a third message that you have to be aware of in order to prepare yourself. This is a list of tools and components that we will stop to invest in. Two things to be aware of. The list of things listed here will not be included in the SAP Business Objects BI 2024, but will remain available inside the BI 4.3 until the end of the uh, priority one support of the BI 4.3, which is uh, end of uh, December 2027. So that's an important thing, which means that if you are using one of the components and uh, you want to adopt uh, the 2024, you have to be re ready to adopt the alternative. But if you want to give you the time to adopt the BI 2024 in order to prepare correctly uh, the alternatives that you are uh, proposing here, uh, you have until the end of 2027 to achieve that. So what are the tools and components that you will stop to invest in and what are the alternatives? Lumira, alternative SAP Analytics Cloud. Crystal Report for Enterprise. Depending with the use case, depending on the data source you are consuming with Crystal Report for Enterprise, two, uh, two tools we that you can use, Webit Engines or Crystal Report Classic. For analysis for all app, the alternative will be SAP Analytics Cloud and more precisely, Data Analyzer into SAP Analytics Cloud. For Live Office, we recommend you to use the web intelligence or data access, which is a functionality available since the BI 4.3 service pack two. This is all about generating a all data flow from a web intelligence document or a web intelligence report part, which can be, for example, a table, so dimensions, measures, variables, and you can use this into Excel directly, and you will get the data in Excel directly. Then I would say uh, something which is really important and you have really to start. The universe, the UNV. will stop to support the UNV, the universe of TAP UNV, by the end of 2027, which means that you have to start to consider the UNIX type of universes uh, and information design tool, which is a designer to edit and create the UNIX. So it can be uh, a huge project. So I would really encourage you, if you are using heavily the UNV, to start to do an assessment and to consider your migration path for the UNIX. The last one is also uh, important. If you are using multi-source universes, or let's say data federation into the UNIX type universes, there is, uh, we will stop to use uh, we will stop to invest into this functionality by the end of 2027 as well. So we call this a multi-source universe in IDT. Alternative is either, depending on the complexity of the multi-source universe, either the new data blending functionality in web engines that will be made available into this release, the service pack re I'm going to demo this in a few seconds, or you can do multi-source uh, data joins at the database level, depending on the database that you are using. This functionality uh, is available in many data sources, in many databases now, for example, Oracle or uh, SAP HANA, for example. But nevertheless, for the two last rows on this table, so UNV and the multi-source UNIX, uh, you have to do an assessment and consider and be ready uh, for this timeline. End of 27, uh, we will stop to support them. But also, if you want to adopt uh, quickly uh, the BI 2024, you have to be aware that this list of tools and components will not be inside the BI 2024. This being said, uh, you know uh, important information to plan the future. Now let's focus on what is new inside the Business Objects BI 4.3, SP3. I'm going to skip a few slides because this is old slide to focus on the demo. SP3. So SP3, uh, we invest in several areas of the products 
And frankly, the main area of investment concern uh, the first pillar, increased productivity uh, with a brand new uh, functionality, uh, which was missing in WebIt engines. This is everything uh, about uh, data, uh, data transformation, data enrichment, data transformation, data join. Uh, I will explain you why in a few seconds and demo it quickly. Otherwise, uh, we have invested in several other areas of the product, uh, in additional uh, data sources, uh, I will explain you in a few seconds, and some improvement usability in multiple areas of uh, the product. You will understand quickly why this is important and what it can bring uh, to your uh, designer community. This being said, let's go one by one. Let's start with uh, the new uh, and brand new functionality, the data mode. We call this the data mode. But first of all, why? Uh, what you have on the screen right now, uh, let me, allow me to use my point uh, to explain is, I would say, uh, the way uh, you used to manage data inside Wabbit engines, inside Wabbit engines, right? Uh, when we delivered Webby at the beginning, a Webby user, or I would say a Webby power user, was able to do multiple things. By multiple things, I mean structure the data by using IDT, that's the tool we recommend, I mean, create a semantic layer on top of uh, the database. Then inside Web Intelligence, it was able to do multiple things, such as clean and complete the data, create end user refined data. We call this, we will summarize this as data preparation. And then once this step was done, it was able to create analysis, organize data in a dashboard or into a report and share the report, the document. We will call this the analytics aspect of web intelligence. So to achieve everything here, the power user was able to was was able to achieve that by using two tools: IDT for the universe creation and web intelligence for the data preparation and the analytics. And at the real beginning, uh, we call this step one. The only person able to achieve that was the IT, someone from the IT. And finally, the conception of uh, the analytics was dedicated for the end user. That we call step one of web intelligence usage. Furthermore, if you want to propagate, I would say, analytics and allow more users to create reports, there is a step two. IT is still responsible of creating the universes. But then you have an analyst. An analyst can be someone in a specific department that will do the data preparation, the analytics, and share it with a counterpart that you will define as an end user. That's a step number two. Step number three, thanks to additional capabilities that we delivered incrementally into web intelligence, IT remain available and responsible for the universe. Analysts will more or less do only the data preparation part because now you, you can create everything by still using web intelligence and share a web document either as a source or as, for example, an OData URL that you can reuse directly inside Webby and an end user, thanks to the many simplifications that you bring that we brought into uh, BI for the tree, the end user can be autonomous in reusing what the analyst has done regarding preparing the data. And the end user was able to explore the data, create its own table visualization and share it for its own uh, consumption, for example. And still to achieve that, it was possible to do this simply by accessing one tool, web intelligence, either the view mode or the design mode. But more or less, uh, using Webby and the Webby engine functionality, you can achieve, achieve the full spectrum here, data probation and analytics. But now, with the BI for the tree, we introduce a new step, step number four. 
And what you wanted to do is really to divide for the end user the step data preparation and analytics question. And still, you will use the same tool, Web Intelligence, but now we bring a new interface, the new data mode for create queries, data providers, merge queries, add variables, define a business semantic inside one area, the new area of Web Intelligence, this new data mode that can be used then to create the analytics by using the web intelligence design mode. And this is what is really new inside the BI 4.3. This is a brand new data mode. So that's all for the retrospective regarding why we move from web intelligence, the one, use, one persona doing everything to potentially a classical end user, an end user being able to achieve the full spectrum of, of BI from data preparation to analytics. This being said, let's, let's do now the demo and you will understand clearly what I mean. Can you see my BI launchpad? Please confirm it and then we move on. Yes, we do. Okay. So let's start with the new data mode. I'm going to open uh, a demo document, uh, this one, ZZ data. So this is uh, BI 4.3 launchpad. This is my demo document. For the sake of this demo, I'm going to save it as uh, data mode demo. Okay. Yes. Okay, so this is a web intelligence document with let's three queries. This is the result of the query number one, the result of the query number two, and the result of the query number three. So, so far, nothing new, right? But what is new is the new data mode. To access the data mode now, you have new entry here into below design data. And inside this data mode, you will be able to do multiple things. First of all, the area is divided in two parts, the preview part at the top and the flow part at the bottom here. First of all, in the flow part, you can see the different queries and where they are coming from. Here you can notice that I have a first query coming from an Excel file, a second query coming from a second Excel file, and a third query coming from, for example, a web intelligence document. Uh, here, you have the query panel, that this block represents the query panel, and the last block here corresponds of the query result. And every time I'm going to click it, you're going to view at the top of the screen a preview of each query. This is the result, the preview of the query number one. This is the preview of the query number two. And this is the result of the query number three. So first of all, you can preview. What else can I do? In my preview mode, I can dig into the data in order to identify uh, wrong things. I can transform things. We propose you uh, a facet mode that you can maximize. And like this, for every occurrence of my, of my uh, dimensions, I can have a preview and I can change, uh, I can see the weight of every uh, row, for example. There is uh, 60,000 row uh, for the dimension year with element 2019, et cetera, et cetera. And if you want, you can change uh, the regression type from count for one of uh, the measures available for this query. Sales revenue, for instance. And I can see here quickly, I can do a sort. And I can have a view that uh, the max revenue, the max max revenue is generated, has been generated for the year 2020 and so on and so on. And I can do this, for example, for every dimension composing my uh, data set, for at least for my first query. I can do it for city if I want to have an overview of what is the max revenue uh, generated for which city. So by applying a descending sort, I can see that this is for New York and so on and so on. So I can change my aggregation 
uh, using account and some other and do a few things sort rank etc etc the reason of things i can do is for example i can uh, turn some of my data if i want by using the free dot here i can do a sort ascending descending but i can apply several things I can apply an uppercase if I want. If I want that everything that it corresponds to, for example, a geographical uh, dimension is now in uppercase. Let's do it. Bang, California city and store name will be all in uppercase and you can do this in one click. Other thing I can do is to transform my data. Uh, first of all, in my next step, I'm going to join the data, right? In the, and I will explain you by that join. And I will use, uh, the year, as you can see, for the year, there is different definition for year. I have year with only the integer, the, the string corresponding to the year, 2022. But in my second data set, there is year 2027, which is a string. So I can fix this quickly. I can do replace. I can do it to replace for the entire colon in one shot, or I can do it one by one, simply by clicking replace. So in this case, I'm going to replace year 2017 by 2017 directly and I apply. And what is going to do is going to replace this in my entire data set. I have year 2027 and I scroll down. I'm going to see that I'm going to access quickly. Let's see uh, uh, below again. That's a big data set. You have still year available. So you have to fix it for year 2018 as well. So quickly replace. 2018. Uh, like I said, I want my data set to be coherent. So for the second data set, all geographical data dimension will be in uppercase, uppercase, and uppercase. I'm going to save my work. So this is done. So the first thing. So like I said, first innovation, I can preview my data in facet mode or not to fix any differences. For example, if I want weak year to be uh, to be more meaningful, I'm going to replace the slash by slash weak, uh, sorry. Number, and done. So now this is 2017 weeks number Twenty nine, etc., etc. So I can do it easily, and this is automatically replaced in my reporting. Uh, in order to be current, I think I have the same uh, dimension here. So I'm going to do it everywhere. In order to be current, replace the slash i slash which dash. Here we go. Save, and normally you would expect that if you do this in the data mode. This will be reflect in the data directly. So you can see year, week, blah, blah, blah is immediately applied everywhere. Same thing for the uppercase for state, city, and store name here. And which we remove the year string before this information. Okay, so we can move on. So now let's say that I have nicely and unseed or clean my data for the data set. Now I can join them. And here comes the importance of the second area of this data mode, the flow here below. I will maximize it. So like I said, here you can see all your, I would say, cubes, yes, generated by the different data set. Not only can you view them, preview them, but now you can join them. By John, this is this come in addition of the uh, the merge dimension functionality that you are all aware of, right? Uh, uh, there is a strict uh, correspondence between the different queries cube that we see here and the list of cubes and objects that you can show hide here this way. And the new things you can do, like I said, you can merge. And you can merge in different ways. You can do a left join, and depending on the order, this will correspond to a right join. Or you can do an append. Append, which means that you take all the data of the first, of the second cube, 
and you add it below the first cube. This is the first step you're going to do. You can do that. And you can name this new uh, cube, virtual cube, which is going to be generated. It will be data from uh, quantum leaks 2017, 2019, and 2019 onward. Because I'm going really to merge, append the two take the, the two microcube to generate one virtual big microcube. Great, and here we go. Here is the first output. As you can see, we have a strict uh, equal because this is an append. We are just adding the cube, the second cube to the first cube. And as a result, now I have one very big cube, which is this one that I have named data 2017-2019 Oh, sorry, mistake. Let me rename it correctly. It did the merge. And 2019 onward, this way. Eight. With the corresponding objects here. One thing you can, you can notice in the join, by doing the first, the first join here, the two original cube are, have been struck through which let you think that, in a sense, they might not be available anymore. And it is exactly the meaning of this. Every time you're going to generate a virtual cube by merging, the original cube and objects will be removed from the report. Remove, I would say, it will be hidden from the design area of the report, which means that I'm adding a new virtual cube here, but data, the two ones here, uh, will just disappear at design time. So let's finish, because what you want to achieve is at the end, once you prepare, you enrich your data, you transform the data, you merge your data, at the end, you just want one cube, which is going to be consumed by all your business users. So if I do the last step, if I create a last virtual cube, in this case, I'm going to do a left join. Let's add the keys. I need to select them by ID, and the ID for each cube is a SKU ID here. I have a SKU number here. I'm doing add. So we're going to use these two dimension as the key for the two original cube. And I don't want to do a left join because I know the order of my demo. I want to do a right join by interverting. This is more or less what I'm doing and create. Now, what is the result? Uh, should have 204 rows. This is not what I want. I want the opposite. Let's invert, create. I still want the 58, 539 rows plus one column which correspond to this SKU description. I want the SKU description to be added to this my, uh, virtual cube. And that's what I get now because the SKU description is available at the end of my data set. So I've, I've done a new merge flow, right? I have a new data set here that I'm going to rename. It will be final uh, data plus SKU description. Let's call it this way. Which is my last step for my uh, flow of transformation and join. And that's it. Now everything has been struck through. So what will be the output? Guess what? If I move now, I'm going to save. If I move now at a decent time, here we go. Of course, the original data are still available. It would be a nightmare if by doing the different step, we break something of any original report in the original report. But lastly, the original cube and queries are no longer available. They are just in there, right? And they have been replaced by the new virtual cube data please give you description. And now if I want to create something new, if I create a new report, if I inject into this report a new table, vertical table, 
I can use the result of my flow to populate this table. And everything is synchronized, everything works nicely. There we go. I have the SKU number, I have my SKU description, uh, city and state store name are in uppercase. Uh, this is what I done and it works nicely. So as you can see, uh, some interesting and promising uh, capabilities within this new uh, data mode for your business and end users. And this is really simple. If you did that, it's because when you were doing previously a merge dimension, it was really difficult to understand what you are achieve, what you are doing. Now, by seeing the result of every merge step being a left join or an append, you immediately understand what you are doing, what is the result of your merge, and furthermore, every time you apply a merge and you consult the final the final data set, you can do everything I've shown in the beginning of this demo, which is in the preview mode, I can continue to track the differences and hence transform, add uh, variables if you want, uh, split my data and so on and so on. So, like I said, this new data mode was the primary objective of the service pack free and we are really happy to make it available for all of you by uh, December uh, this year. So data mode in web intelligence SP3 for the tree. So end of the first demo. Indeed, by doing this data mode, we did additional things, which are nice in a different area of the product. So let me open a second document. Where is it? Uh, okay, folder. Timo, Greg, GBO, what's new in VF for the 3 sp 3 Here we go. So that's the second part of my demo. This is the different things I'm going to show you. So quickly, uh, before to enter with in the different features, we did many improvements in the interface. Uh, one of them is now when you're into Webit engines, you don't have to go back into the home screen of your launch pan to open an existing web document or to create a new web intelligence document directly in your web intelligence interface into the web into the web menu items we have added two new icons the first one is open an existing web document you can open it directly and you have a brand new dialog box that will let you achieve several things first of all you can access all your favorite documents. It's just a matter to do a right click on some specific document to flag them as favorite. To achieve that is quite easy. You can do it here. Favorite, bang, this is done. Save, no, save. And now if you go back in my favorite, oh, it should appear somewhere here the next time you will log in. You can access recent document. Uh, you can access, of course, your personal document and your corporate or public folders. You can access also the categories, being the personal one and corporate. And there is a new thing, which is document recovery. Every time you're going to work on a web document, and for any reason, you do not save this web document, you close your session, you leave it open, and the session ends, we will save it as a... Uh, uh, you will save it as a uh, recovery items. And the next time you will log in into Webinar Intelligence, if you see this red items here below the, uh, the this icons, which is open document, it means that there is a document waiting for you to be open and saved in case you don't want to lose uh, all the things you have done into this Webinar document. So document recovery. Please, so many things, right? Okay. We have the new create web document here with a brand new select data source dialog box. And into this dialog box, we have added many, many new, new things. The first one is 
your recent documents or the recent data sources being used to create a new Ruby document. So you can access them easily with, within the recent folders. If you select the SAP BI platform repository, you have ordered, you have ordered everything via yeah, universities, web intelligence document, blah, 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 Excel, text, SAPDU, SAP, and, and new thing in the cloud storage, with the service pack two, we provide you an access to your Google Drive. With the service pack three, we propose you an access to Microsoft OneDrive, which means that if you create a link between your business related platform and your OneDrive, uh, you can access everything you have in your OneDrive, being your personal folder or your shared folder in OneDrive, and you can access what is stored inside, which means, for example, an Excel file, a text file, a CSV file, et cetera, et cetera. So Microsoft OneDrive is available within the BI 4.3 Service Pack 3 for you as a cloud storage. <clears throat> uh, one important thing, here I'm showing you the workflow at the creation. I can access a Google Drive, I can access a OneDrive. I will not show you the output, this is what I, I call this the input workflow. There is an output workflow. If you have the right, right and authorizations, you can create a scheduled task that will take a Ruby document, refresh it every, let's say every day, and export it as a PDF on a CSV and a TXT as an Excel file in one of this Google Drive uh, or Microsoft OneDrive. Right, you can automate the generation of information into the drive by using the publication or the scheduler uh, functionality. Okay, what else? Uh, schedule to Google Drive, I, I've mentioned it. Okay, uh, one tiny thing, one small thing, uh, but it was uh, asked by many, uh, many customers. Uh, at the few time, uh, small things. Uh, is, oh, sorry. I'm lost with my double screen. Here we go. We have the maximize. You can maximize your screen if you want. Another thing we did uh, now at reading time, for every uh, information store here, you can apply a sort and a rank directly at view time. Uh, you don't have to be in edit mode anymore to apply a sort and a rank or top, but top, bottom on every things you see on the screen here, just to do a right click to access the sort and rank functionality for your end user. So this is a uh, small cumulative things uh, that you can do at, uh, at view time. Okay, that's next one. Easy creation of report. What I mean by that? We have to be at in edit mode and to help you to organize and to create nice report easily inside Rapid Engines, uh, we have added a nice functionality, which is uh, block guides. Every time you're going to move something in order to align them nicely, we have a block guide. This is a black dot line that will appear in order to help you to format them nicely and to align them quickly. Here we go. In one click, I have aligned top to top the two blocks. Then I can use the ensure to align them nicely to every component on your screen. Uh, we have added also uh, the lasso. If you want to move something not in one shot. The lasso will help you to select them, not one by one, but everything. And I can move them and position them nicely to create your report. Okay, let's have a look at this second block. I can align by using the ensure like this. There is a kind of snap effect here quickly. And I want to align it within the block. Here we go. Uh, for the table, there is two things we did for the table. First of all, to 
change the size of the colon of the table, which is a task you are doing every day and easily. Now you don't have to select it anymore. By using an over with a mouse, it gives you the action to resize the, the, the every column in one shot. Second thing we did, if you select the block, you have now ensure here that you can use to resize the entire table in one shot. And it works for all the columns. We keep the proportions of the different columns when you resize the block table in one shot. Here we go. As you can see, we do not overwrite uh, uh, the relative width of every columns. Second thing we did, if you want to align the size of the column easily, you see, now you can have table with perfectly aligned the columns if you want. So let's move this one. Here we go. I'm going to move it below a little bit here. And I want to align. No, no, I don't want to do this. I want to select the table, move it, align the table perfectly. Here we go. I'm going to select the table block and align it nicely. Here we go. Now I want the columns to be perfectly aligned. So I'm clicking outside. Here we go. And I'm doing this one by one. And I can align perfectly my table. If you have this use case to align different kind of table, one below each other and perfectly align them the different columns uh, for to format them quickly. So as you can see, uh, generating an output which is perfectly aligned, everything aligned, is now really easy thanks to the guide functionality with a snap with a snap effect. Okay, uh, another thing we did to help you and more precisely the provisor because like you have guessed, this is the functionality for the provisor, the person which, is, which has to create web intelligence document. Uh, we try to help him into its day-to-day -day actions. Formatting. We have cumulative things to propose you. Uh, first of all, for the text, we have a new option for the text, which is justify. Uh, before you had aligned to left, middle, uh, right. Now you have justify in one click. Uh, for the table cell also, for the background, for example, if I select this background here for this header, uh, you can choose the back linear background and you can choose to apply something else, which is a, a linear gradient, which can be vertical or uh, horizontal, uh, you choose what you want, and you can do it for your either. To help you to create nice report and to enrich the formatting of your document, you have icons at your disposal, and you have tons of icons to help you to bring not only interactivity, but meaning in your web intelligence document. Uh, to use that, it's really easy. You go into the cells, you choose icon and you propose you by default hundreds and hundreds of icons etc 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 you can search for specific thematic uh, you have tags if you want everything related to anali analytics here we go you have one or everything related to uh Time, sorry, date, the freeze, what's going on? Yeah. Mm. Let's do it again. Icon to search for time. Here you go. You can search the different tags, right? And to use them is really easy. You select your favorite uh, icon, for example, let's say uh, this one, insert. You choose a place in your document. Once this is done, you can do whatever you want with it. If you want to increase the size, let's say, uh, date, 
this is a font so you can maximize this way uh, you can choose a color uh, you can choose the background uh, in one in one click uh, background is where is the background background is here i want it to be this color and here we go here you go and yes once again icons in your uh Web documents to enrich uh, the capabilities of formatting for your document. Other thing we did is around filters and functions. Uh, for example, uh, you are all using element linkings or input controls to filter your document. But what was annoying was to, at some point of time, you all wanted to display uh, the result of an input control selection uh, into your report. So to achieve that, we introduce new functions such as element linking filters or input control filter. This is formulas that you can use in your, the editor to capture your selection. For example, if I select 2015 for this table to filter this big table, my element link action is captured by the variable and can be displayed in my document. Same thing, for example, for the second one, right? And if I remove all of them, if I'm doing, if I'm using uh, both entry here, 2015 Illinois, which is my selection and the result is well captured. And what is working for uh, the element link here, which is a way to use uh, a table or chart to filter something else works also for an input control. For example, here I have an input control of on year, and I want to filter not on everything but on 2014 and 2015. I validate, and here we go. My selection can be captured is captured by the formula input control filter. And you have some other things if you want to provide a document that will list, for example, uh, what kind of variable I've been used, what is the definition of the variable, and you would like to create this in a specific document. Now you have formula of description of, to capture the definition of every variable uh, in your document. And to achieve that is really simple, right? Uh, uh, here, the formula I've used is, uh, formula of here to capture the content of dummy variable. Dummy variable is this variable. Uh, and this is year plus late with uh, a statement dummy variable, that's it, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So new formulas to capture, first of all, the filtering actions to be displayed in your document or additional formulas to document the content of specific calculation or the description of specific calculations. Other things we did, we have a new chart, tray chart. So this is not multiple charts, this is just one chart. Uh, let me show you how to create that. If I delay this one, uh, you go into chart, you have multiple chart. I choose to create a pie chart you select it and so I'm giving it this size. Okay, here we go. And how to fit these kind of things. The chart multiplier is whatever the chart I'm going to create, I want to use it to be repeated by a specific dimension. And the dimension I'm going to use is year. Done. Now I want to create a part chart. The part chart uh, sector color I will use to be coherent. This is uh, margin by year. Mm, this is state. And the size will be uh, sales revenue or margin. Let's say margin. So here we go. Here we go. I have the sector which represents state. The size is based on margin and the multiplier is the year. And you go. That's what we called uh, a tray chart. That's the same 
chart multiply by another dimension. And you have different kinds of uh, uh, multiple chart or tree chart. Once again, this is the entry is here, pie chart, column chart, column chart with two axes, blah, 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 blah. Okay, other things we did. Uh, for the intra-document link. So as you know, in WebB, you can navigate inside the same WebB document by using intra-document link. This is a kind of open doc that when you click on it, you will open another report inside the same WebB document. The improvement you have done in the SP3 is the following one. Now, when you will enable this functionality, you can pass the parameter to the targeted document, to the filter of the targeted document. I'm showing you the targeted document. This targeted document has two input control, year and state. Now in the source document, if I click on year 2015, this information will be used inside the intra-document link to be applied in the input control of the targeted document. If I click on 2015, done. I'm jumping to the targeted document and 2015 is applied to the input control automatically. I can reset it if I want, select everything. Okay, and same thing for the second one. And it works uh, nicely. Uh, for example, for this one, let's select it, 2000 DC Washington. Uh, and it, it, it was on what I click in, 2000 DC Washington, it was one of the link I've used here. So now you can pass uh, filters to the intra document link easily. Another thing we did, this is all about the open document. And we did not necessarily bring uh, new capabilities, but we have enrich the open document dialog box creation. So now, if I edit this link, you will see that in the dialog box, everything will appear. When I select the targeting document for the open document link, which is a way to navigate from one document to another document, when you will have selected the targeted document, not only the open document will appear, but practically all the uh, options that you can use and apply to generate an open document uh, will be there. Uh, some options, but for example, if you have prompts in the targeted document, you can select them and pass specific values to be applied for the link, for example, I want this column here, which contains your information when I click on it, to pass the information to the prompt here of the targeted document. And this will generate automatically the right URL for you. Not only can you pass the default, but uh, well, you can decide if it will be uh, open in a new window or in uh, the same window, et cetera, et cetera. And if I cancel and if I click on it, yes, if I click Florida, uh, I will go in reading mode to make it work. Reading Florida DC, I click on DC, done. It will open the targeted document. And for state, it will apply DC by default and I can execute on it. Additional things I would like to show you in the area of the prompts. At the design time, when you will have multiple prompts in the web document, we introduce uh, three innovations. The first one, we call this new area, the prompt manager. I can define a specific prompt order now. You can see I can move the prompts in the order I want. And if I click on apply and save, 
it means that if I refresh this web document, the prompt will appear in the order I've defined it in the prompt manager here. You can see this is a strict coherence between both. Second thing, you have some int to help the end user, to help him to select, to enter the things. This orange ribbon here, we call this int. This is to provide guidance to the end user. To create an int, it's really easy. Uh, if you edit a web document, every prompt you're going to add in the prompt uh, definition. Uh, you have the time, not edit here. That's here in the prompt. That prompt int, you can add information. And if you want, if you don't know what it means here, you have the int that will appear uh, with additional information in the properties of every prompt. But at least you have a uh, prompt manager to sort, prompt int to provide information. And last but not least, when you want to save your selection, now variants, BI variants can be personal or public. That's a new capability, the new functionality. Either everything I will have select in my for my prompts here can be saved and reapply the next time as my um, uh, option of uh, prompts on. And I can make it personal and public. Click, which public means that every other user having access to the same web document can reuse my predefined selections, which correspond to the input, the values I've selected for the different prompts automatically, right? BI variants, public or personal. Okay, uh, I'm going to cancel and go back to into my document. Uh, I don't want to open this one. I want to I want to be here. Uh, I think that's all. Oh yes, uh, I forget quickly. We did many improvements in the interface. Uh, what I mean by improvement, I mean uh, everything is more densified in different areas of the products. Okay, now we're going to coming back to my deck. Uh, you're going to get all the slides. Uh, I'm going to show you quickly what I mean. Where is my presentation? I'm lost with the two screen. Here we go. Quickly to finish to end this presentation. <clears throat> Uh, I'm going to skip this. I would like to remind you all that the slide, you're going to get them. Uh, you have new data sources, new cumulative enhancement for the platform that you, I will let you discover. Uh, I would like to remind you all that we have uh, for you two freemium offerings from Need for Viz. If you want to create web intelligence into a true uh, a data visualization tool and data exploration tool. Uh, this is totally free uh, from our partner need for these It propose you uh, several uh, additional charts that you can use to enrich your document. I will encourage you to have a look at this first of premium offer. The second one is from Wisdom. If you want to migrate, if you want to move from 4.1 to 4.2, 4.2 to 4.3, 4.1 to 4.3, um, from 4.3 to the cloud being SAP Business Objects Private Cloud Edition, they propose you a freemium offer when you can compare the uh, content of your business objects uh, deployment uh, before and after. Once again, this is the freemium offer content them, many customers rely on them to help them to understand what's going on uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, but also what's going on when they migrate. Okay, I will stop here.
I think, oh, three minutes passing the six o'clock. Um, I will stop here. I would like to thank you all. <laughs> Gregory, do you still have a few minutes to uh, answer a couple of questions? Yes, I can take the three minutes. I really apologize, uh, Tony, as usual. I'm no late. worries. No worries, a lot to say. And I see that uh, the data mod is uh, raising a lot of interest. Uh, we have a lot of reactions, but I won't take the time to share them on the screen. But maybe we can take a few uh, questions. So yes, submit this presentation will be shared. So uh, watch this space after the webinar. We'll share it uh, maybe in a couple of days. Um, thanks, Gregory, for mentioning the freemium that we offer on, uh, on, uh, on the SAP community. But that will be also uh, a one pager inside BA for the tree service pack three. If you want to see uh, more of it, you will have access. So let's take a couple of questions now. Um, discovering it at the same time. So we have a question from Pablo. Fiori BA launch panda object navigation has been modified in SP3. We have found the pagination work differently from previously released when sorting several items. And I have found a note which says that we will be rewrited in this version. Uh, correct. Uh, obviously, in the, I didn't show it to you, but inside the BR4.3 size pack 3, uh, we have decided to rewrite what you call the, the folder navigation on the way uh, you see, uh, when you see in the report, um, uh, the folder, the columns, etc., etc. This area has been rewritten, and I think this will answer uh, uh the things you are mentioning in this question so yes this has been rewritten inside uh, the size pack three. another question from uh, our partners Sibion data and keith uh, did alerting on webby document makes it to for the trsp3 and it was on the roadmap no uh, it has been postponed to bi 2024 so which is uh, the next release most of the questions are related to the data mode. So I think this, this one was as well from Ilya. Can you please clarify if transformation will be done in the source or after data will be retrieved into the internal data store and then transformed? Okay, everything you will do inside the data mode will not have an impact on the, on the original data set coming from Oracle, for example. We do not, we never touch the original data stored into Oracle, for example, or in ANA. Everything I show you in the data mode, everything, the transformation, upper, lower case, splits, uh, replace, and so on and so on, will be done locally into web intelligence, into the result set of data stored into the web microcube. Another question from Ayman. Will it be a new user security right to enable deny this function for user group? I'm glad you asked these questions. Uh, yes and no, <laughs> uh, because I, I, uh, to today, uh, if you have the right to edit a document, you will access it. So if you have the edit mode, you will access the data mode. If you don't want to show this to to a person who have the edit mode, also, uh, you can use uh, the user interface customization to hide the data mode area. Hope that's answering your question, Ayman, even if it's a yes and no. Another question from Jen, for which type of data source will the functionalities you're demonstrating in data mode work? For example, will they work for BW backs queries? Your demo shows dimensions and measure objects. Will they work for detailed objects also? It will work for everything web intelligence is able to query. Oh. Okay, uh, I'm not sure about the question of Chris, but maybe that will ring a bell to you, uh, Gregory. Are there data volume limits uh -huh. on this scenario? Uh, uh, it's the same limit that you have today within Webby uh, when you, so which means that you have to find the right balance between your end user needs and the performance of the Web Intelligence interface. Even if Web Intelligence Report Server is a 64 bits, uh, uh, is based on a 64 bit architecture. Uh, there is no database limit, no data volume limitation, but let's be frank, the more you will have, the more you will query, don't expect it to be fast. You will have to pay the price of loading this into your memory. So we'll have to wait, as usual in Webit engines. Thank you, Gregory. I see if we have uh, one or two more. Uh, another one from 
Pablo, who says, so the new workflow proposes to create Webby as a data source, and then create new documents based on them instead of universes. No, no. So if you if you think this is the case, the answer is yes and no, 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 no. No. The the idea behind this is to uh, bypass the bottleneck and to propose you, you more possibility. The reason why is really simple. When you create a universe, let's say that the universe could represent uh, the validated versions of your company. This is what you consult, you use to understand how your business is running. This is valid validated data uh, that you can consume without any questions. But in department, when you have to create reported, let's be frank, you can base your Ruby document on universe, which is a use case you recommend to continue to use, but you have to consume other type of data that your IT does not have necessarily access because as a department, you might want to be autonomous. There is also another version of the two, for example, for marketing, which is not managed by IT, but only by the specific person is a marketing department and you would like to merge data coming from the universe, the corporate finance universe with data coming from the local database used by the marketing for its campaign. And that's what you are enabling here. The ability to merge corporate data with departmental data to create a business data, the business layer. Enabling I hope this is clear. VI. Yeah. Uh, another one from Sudakar. Can linked UNV universes converted to UNX using ID to conversion in new version? Uh, okay. okay, I'm surprised with these questions because in my understanding, link UNV can be transformed automatically into link UNX. Link UNX is a, a master UNX with child uh, UNX. Normally this workflow works. If it doesn't work, please write to me. Okay, and the last one on the universes, sorry for all the others, um, but we run out of time. Is there an ETA for UNX support in Crystal 2020? No, no ETA. Uh, to be frank, we discussed this possibility, but today no, 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 nothing tangible to be shared. Thanks, Gregory. Uh, once again, the data mode raises a lot of interest. As I said that in the introduction of this webinar, there are going to be a live summit SAP Business Subject on December the 2nd. Why not taking this topic again and, uh, and, and going deeper into this topic? That will be, I think, yes, very interesting. Let's have a chat, Gregory, uh, offline. Uh, thanks, everyone, uh, again, for joining. You've been uh, more than 150 today. Thanks for your questions. Uh, the webinar recording will be shared on our YouTube uh, channel. I shared the link on the chat, the PDF as well, uh, in a couple of days. So watch this space. And uh, see you later. Thank you, Gregory. Thank you very much. Have a good day, everyone. Bye. Thank you all. Bye-bye.